Let's be honest, most of us don't really understand what the metaverse actually is. Some of us just have a vague idea of what the metaverse someday may be. We may think that the metaverse is virtual reality, or that it's a game like Minecraft. And while those are great sources of inspiration for the metaverse, I believe that these examples don't capture the true potential of the metaverse. So, what is the metaverse and why should we care? These are the questions that six of us at the first ever Reality School IRL Learning Retreat are attempting to answer in this video. I'm your host, Ryan Kopinski, and I'm joined by Monica, Sam, Melissa, Thomas, and Michaela. Let's get into it. I don't know if you know, but Meta spent $36 billion on their metaverse efforts in the last three years. $36 billion. And maybe we're also equally crazy. We didn't spend $36 billion, but we spent six days of our busy lives here building for the metaverse. So are we crazy or is this actually useful? And I think the question that I've been asking myself is like, wh why is something so vague and so far non-existent so valuable? And hopefully I can answer the, that question. Okay, so the question of, you know, what is the metaverse? I did some research and I found, I think, two examples or two, I wanna say, experts that can give us a good idea. So one of them is Neil Stephenson. Uh, I don't know if any of you have read the book Snow Crash, but he coins the term metaverse. He also says that he was making it up as he was going along. So he, you know, wrote a science fiction book and now all of us are trying to actually build what he said. And in that book, it's really dystopian. So we should not be just like blindly following this book, but he kind of coined the term metaverse. And the second person is Matthew Ball. He wrote several blog articles that were explanation of what the metaverse could be. And so those two people I used as inspiration um, and also the movie Ready Player One, right? I don't know if you've ever seen that, but Ready Player One, if you haven't seen it, definitely watch it. It's, it's, a, it's a great inspiration for the metaverse. As a challenge, I started thinking, okay, what do I wanna say that the metaverse is? Being a content creator, I think we have to think about audience. So if a five-year-old is asking me, what's the metaverse? It should be different than if someone with 10 years of software development experience asked me that question. And so as a challenge, I'm gonna try to explain the metaverse to a five-year-old, to an adult, and to a technical person. To a five-year-old, I'd say that the metaverse is a universe of digital worlds like Minecraft and Fortnite. But instead of these worlds being separate games, you can actually travel from Minecraft to Fortnite. And the cool thing is that when you, for example, hop from Minecraft to Fortnite, you can keep all your money, outfits, skins, and any other things you've collected along the way. And to make the metaverse even better, you can quite literally step into it using virtual or augmented reality glasses. To an adult, I describe the metaverse as the three-dimensional successor to the internet. Currently, most of the internet's real estate is two-dimensional web pages. While we do have online games that are rendered in three dimensions, most of us still use a 2D window that is our phone or tablets to access the internet. In the metaverse, almost everything will be in three dimensions, including your digital representation, also known as an avatar. Using virtual or augmented reality, you will quite literally move in three dimensions as you interact with a vast collection of virtual worlds and the digital citizens. In addition, most current online multiplayer games that utilize 3D virtual worlds are constrained to a limited number of participants per server session. That number can be 30, 60, or maybe even 100. This constraint is very much the result of limited computing resources available to us. In the metaverse, there will be millions, if not hundreds of millions of people participating at any one time. The metaverse will be enormous in scale and its virtual worlds will have their own cultures, economies, and maybe even governments. And finally, to a technical person, I'd say that the metaverse is an interoperable network of three-dimensional virtual worlds that are rendered in real time and accessed through a variety of devices, including virtual and augmented reality glasses. The virtual worlds within this network have their own economies and currencies, ideally supported by decentralized protocols similar to Bitcoin and Ethereum. The underlying infrastructure upon which this digital universe is built can support millions of concurrent users and allows for automatic and full persistence. I, I think we've kind of answered, or at least I hope I sufficiently answered what the metaverse is. But there's actually a more important question. Why the hell should we care? 
Like, why does it matter? Why are so many companies investing enormous amounts of money and people capital into this thing that doesn't quite exist yet and is mostly misunderstood? So as some of you may know, education is really dear to my heart. Um, I really care about education. That's why I also have an educational YouTube channel. And I think we fell short with the current internet on online education. I think we filled it. We know that these online courses or online universities, their retention is actually really low. A lot of people aren't graduating or completing the courses. And if you've ever tried to just watch a technical course, you might fall asleep. It's quite boring. You know, even if there's a financial incentive, it's, it's hard to get yourself motivated uh, to watch these. And I think the metaverse with its immersiveness and a sense of presence, right? Because you'll actually quite be, you'll be in it. And hopefully you'll be able to show emotion and be able to kind of sense people's energy, right? Like, because we're right now IRL and I can like look at you. I can see if you're bored out of your mind or if you're really engaged. And it's very hard to see that on a 2D iPad or a computer. And so I, I think education in the metaverse has the potential to be equally or maybe even better than IRL. That's what we feel to do in the current internet just because of the current limitations. People usually think of games when they think of the metaverse, but I think the metaverse is like so much more than, than games. Uh, although I think it'll be very exciting to have, um, you know, you step into a game. But I think the future of work, right? All of us, uh, and some of us actually are still remote, right? We still do, our, our work remotely. But with the pandemic, you know, past us in 2020 and 2021, we were all essentially locked up in our makeshift home offices. Um, you know, like some, I, I saw some pictures of people having like shoe boxes as like standing desks. Like we really just had to make do with what we had. But for me personally, it was incredibly lonely and fatiguing, right? Like just watching people on a screen talking about business problems. I mean, Zoom fatigue is real. And I think the lack of like an emotional connection, the lack of feeling connected to people in the real space. I think the metaverse has a chance, I'm not sure, but I think it has a chance to make remote collaboration more lively and engaging and emotional. The benefit of that is that high earning jobs and really interesting work becomes available to people in places that are usually underserved or completely ne neglected. You can now work for Google and you can be in Wyoming, in Idaho, in Florida, Georgia. You can be international. We are no longer bound by, you know, the Bay Area or by LA or New York. I mean, rent in New York is like $7,000 for a freaking studio. But you can now quite comfortably live in Ohio and have a house and have a family and you can work for one of the best companies in the world. And so for the future of work, I am hopeful that also the metaverse can really make it much more engaging and less fatiguing than just watching a Zoom screen. So with education, what I think is interesting, um, you know, you mentioned that we can go in different worlds. That kind of reminds me of the magic school bus uh, where, you know, Miss Frizzle would take kids into like a human body or shrink them or like go to space or whatever. So now we can actually do that. Um, I mean, not in real life, but in virtual life, so to speak, with education. So it makes it more engaging and interesting. So I just wanted to back you up a little bit with that um, the anecdotal story that I have. I think it was pretty early days. Uh, VR wasn't even uh, really out yet. I think this must have been late 2010s, early 2010s, something like that. And uh, it was one of the early Assassin's Creed games. And I can't remember if it was like the second or third one, but in one of the missions you start um, in, I think it was Spain or, or somewhere, and you gather all of the slowly materials that you would need to take what would be the basically the famous Christopher Columbus voyage. And uh, you go around the first couple of days gathering up the materials that you would take on the boat. You you gather up the, you know, the crew and, and all of that. And then you go and you actually literally get on the boat and then you do all you participate all the activities that you would do over those 27 days cooking you know cleaning getting in a bar fight with your buddies I mean the whole thing and I couldn't help but think this was I think even earlier VR I was like this needs to be a VR experience you know we talk about edutainment all the time but I was like I, I knew I was playing a game but I, I knew I was also feeling for the first time like this visceral connection to like learning about the experience and I thought, wow, like if you could do this in VR and be in that moment, you know, it's basically been proven that 
the retention that you get from being in an experience versus you know reading it through a book it's off the charts i totally agree with you like there's the uh, concept of everybody's learning methods like the auditory and well that's a myth and if anything, it's been shown that it's just more effective to have multiple inputs. So you have auditory and visual at the same time. And the more of those being combined at once, the more, like you said, effective, the more it sinks in, the more you connect with the material. And so I think like a virtual meta experience where you're more immersed not only allows you to see, for example, concepts that are really abstract um, down to like particle physics where you really can't see that the way we can present information can just be totally new and I think your video game example was like really cool in demonstrating that. One thing I was thinking about when you're talking is that I've heard a lot of people kind of defining the metaverse or speaking about the metaverse like almost looking for an entry point like saying like where is it as if it were like this physical mall that you get into and they're like who who owns it um, where where's the platform and I think the metaverse is going to be uh, and it's already you know developing um, as, as a as a layer of nodes right that are actually disconnected like increasingly disconnected from the physical in the, in the sense of where you are located so I think when you talk also about like crypto etc that is actually a big part of the metaverse because it's going to mean that you are interacting in terms of exchanging value not specifically like with your currency from your country or with you know you're not like you're not like defined in your actions by where you are and i think that's where the value of the metaverse is because um there's this mit uh this mit lecture by uh, steve jobs where he's uh introducing his company next and he makes the point that people don't really change technologies because they're a little bit better. They change technologies because the gap between the older technology and the new one is so big that if your competition adopts it and you don't, you're going to go broke. That's why people actually change. So what I think the metaverse, like there's so much investment to make into it, right? But I think the people who are going to be investing heavily, and I think that's why Mark Zuckerberg has invested so much, is because it's going to create so much value in terms of like the way you can communicate. So I think education, universities, and business are going to be uh, the capital, like the investors that make the vetters. And then the more built it is, the more we're gonna start getting into it for other things because we're gonna be into it anyways for work. Right, so I think that's what the metaverse is. I think the metaverse word is overused and people are just saying it to mean everything everything right now every kind of 3d world every game is now a metaverse i actually think we're already in the metaverse i think any virtual device like a lot of us are on the phone on the internet all day like our lives are already on the web for the most part if that's not meta then i don't know what is like we're all on our phones we're all connected with the apple watches we have now the snap glasses that you can record your whatever you're doing i think we're already in the metaverse i think the metaverse everyone's imagining is like sword art online if anyone's watched that anime where you put on the headset and it's like you go to sleep and you're basically transported into this virtual reality world and it's like you're in that world and you can feel stuff in that world so it's like you're not no, no longer in the physical world you've transported, kind of teleported, like you're in a dream somewhat. And in Sword Art Online, it had its own economy, it's, it had its own government, its own guilds. And I think that's what everyone's imagining, along with having multiple of these worlds that you can transfer along. But I also think we're too focused in VR in general. I think the metaverse is also something like cyberpunk, where it's like augmented reality. So you're just walking and everything's suddenly like you see stuff popping up in the street like in cyberpunk you it's kind of embedded in your brain somewhat that's one part of the metaverse that was kind of popular back then now everyone's more focused on vr i'm not sure where, where the shift came in maybe because of meta announcing all their headset stuff but i think that's actually more impressive like the integration of virtual items with the real world like i don't think we need to be separated from the real world to be in the metaverse? That's actually really interesting. So 
I, I, I tend to agree that our behaviors, for once, are ahead of the technology. Because usually it's like a technology in search of human behavior. And I think what you're saying, it's like, it, we're already, I mean, we're already so meta. Like, um, that's interesting. And I, I think it's also a common misconception. I think you hit at home with that one is people think of the metaverse as a game or VR. But the metaverse is really a, a 3D rendered you know, environment that may be VR, but it can also be augmented reality, it can be different devices. There might even be an, a metaverse that is pure voice-based, right? Where it's like spatial audio. And so you're in this metaverse, it's the real world, but the audio is what essentially immerses you into a layer of digitization. So that was really fascinating too. Like, I mean, everyone really here, here is like contributing really well. I love this. I hope that this hopefully at least gives a, a, a glimpse at what the metaverse can be why I think it matters to me, why I, you know, spend months preparing for, an, for you know, a retreat like this that we can learn and build cool things. Um, but I think for builders, I think the metaverse will be bigger, much, much bigger than our current internet in terms of scale, in terms of problems, in terms of innovation. And it being so big, I think there's so many problems that we can solve. So during the next few days, we're gonna work on solutions and kind of like hack prototypes to kind of paint a picture of what it can be. But I think the business opportunities in the metaverse are incredible. And that's why someone like Meta is spending 36 billion in a span of three years. And that's why Apple has spent the last 10 years doing research on you know, the AR VR headsets. Um, but that's I think also why we are here to as individuals build something cool for the metaverse.